All right, so this is one of the cooler looking projects. We're gonna build this theme clock where we use uh, CSS to style these hands right here, these needles, which are obviously the hour, the minute, and second. And then we're gonna use JavaScript to power it and have it show the current time. We're gonna update it every second so that it ticks like an actual clock. We're gonna show a digital readout of the time, the day, the date, and we're also gonna be able to toggle it to dark mode and then back to light mode. So this is one of my favorite projects of this course. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so we're gonna get started here on our HTML. Let's say for the title theme clock and get rid of the H1. And I'm just gonna paste in the, the dribble link for what, you know, what, what this project was inspired from just to give them credit. And we're gonna have a clock, but we're also gonna have a way to toggle the light mode and the dark mode. So that's gonna be a button. So we'll have a button with the class of toggle. And in here, for now, let's say dark mode. And then underneath that, we'll have our clock dash container. And this is gonna include the clock itself. So I'm gonna have a class of clock. And the clock will have three needles. So let's say class needle and let's create three of those and then each one will have its have a, a separate class so we can tell which one is the hour which one is the minute and which one is the second okay and then underneath that we just want to div with center point that's going to be the center of the clock and then outside of the clock div but still within the container we're going to have a class of time and this is gonna come from the JavaScript, but for now I'm just gonna hard code 12 o'clock. And then we also want the date, and the format of this is gonna be like Monday, Monday, November, and then the day will be in a span. So let's say span with a class of circle, and then in here I'll just put a two, so Monday, November 2nd. All right, so if I save that, that's what this is gonna look like. So let's jump into our style sheet and I don't know if we'll get the whole all this. Yeah, we should be able to do all the CSS. Um, so I'm going to bring in, let's see, we're actually going to use a font called Hebo. So let's get from here over to uh, CSS and say CSS question mark family and set that to H E E B O. So that's gonna be our main font, let's say colon 300. And then we're gonna add that down here. Hebo, save, you can see that font, the font has now changed. And then, let's see, for the body here, let's display flex, we want it line center, we can get rid of flex direction. And yeah, the rest should be okay. Now, as far as the colors go, I'm actually gonna use some custom properties. So I'm gonna go up here and let's say on the root scope, I wanna have a primary color of black and then a secondary color of white. So basically, this is going to be for for regular mode or, or light mode i should say and then if the html has a class of dark because we're actually going to change that within the javascript to enable dark mode then let's actually set the primary color because you can have different scopes for different variables so if it's on this primary dark scope then the primary color i'm sorry html dark scope and the primary color will be white. And the primary color is like the hands of the clock and stuff like that, um, the text. And then the secondary color will be, let's do 333, three, three, so real dark gray. And then we'll say html.dark. And we're gonna set the background color here to let's do one 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 which is almost black and then the color so the text is going to be the primary color so var dash dash primary color and it's going to be white because on that scope the primary color is white everywhere else 
the primary color will be black. And obviously you don't have to use custom properties, but I figured I'd, I'd make it so that we could easily, you know, change these up here rather than going through and changing each one later on. So when we click dark mode and this changes, you know, the background goes dark and the, everything else goes white. I want it to have a transition so that it kind of has a fading effect rather than just, you know, flicking to a different color. So I'm going to add Let's go right here and on HTML on the HTML element. Let's transition, say transition all 0.5 seconds with an ease in effect. Okay, so that way when the background color changes, it'll fade in. Now for the let's start on the this stuff in here for the toggle. So the toggle button, let's do background color and we're going to set that to a cost to our one of our custom properties of primary color, which is going to be black by default. And then let's set the color to the secondary color. Okay, so we'll have secondary color and let's get rid of the border. Let's set a border radius of four pixels. Let's set the uh, padding to eight pixels top and bottom 12 pixels left and right. And what else? Let's position this. So I'm going to position this to be absolute and I want it up at the top. So let's say 100 pixels down from the top. And then this has this outline when it's when we focus on it. So let's say toggle when it's in its focus state, we want to set the outline to none. Okay, so now let's start on actually let's give it a curse uh, cursor pointer as well. Okay, so let's start on the clock container which wraps around the, the needles and wraps around the uh, the center point. So clock dash container and I'm going to display that as a flex box. And then let's set the flex direction from row. Let's set it to a column and I'm going to justify the content to uh, space. Let's do space between and then align items to center. Now we can't really see much within this clock container because everything is just an empty div. Um, so we'll go ahead and start to style the stuff inside. So we do have a clock class that's going to be position relative so we can position stuff inside of it. Absolute. And I'm going to set the width and the height both to 200 pixels. OK. And then we're going to do the needles. Now, every needle, hour, minute and second has this needle class. And I'm going to give this clock a temporary background color of just a light gray. I'm not going to keep this here. It's just so we can see the outline of the clock and we can position the needles. So we're going to have a, like a base needle class. Remember, we have the the hour, the minute and second needle. But this is the, the base class and we want the background color of this to be whatever the um, primary color is. And then we're going to position this absolute within the clock class and the clock class is relative. So position absolute and let's put it from the top. Let's say 50 percent and from the left 50 percent and let's give it a initial height of 65 pixels. Obviously each needle, you know, the, the hour is going to be shorter than the minute, but will make the 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 hour 65 or the base needle 65 and then the width of the needles will be three pixels. All right, so you can see it's positioned right here. Now, one thing I want to add to this is a transform origin because we are going to rotate these needles or these hands. Um, if I say needle or hand, I mean the same thing. Uh, so we're going to use transform rotate but I don't want it to rotate like from the middle. I want it to rotate from uh, the bottom center. 
you know, so it, it goes like this. I mean, I can't really show you with my mouse, but you know what I mean? I don't want it to spin on the middle. I want it to spin on the bottom center. So we're going to set the transform origin to bottom center. Okay, and then let's take, let's say needle and then hour. So if it has the hour class, let's set transform. And we're going to translate because we want to move this up, right? We want we want the bottom of this to be up here because this is basically the clock, this this square. So let's translate on. Uh, actually, we're going to use translate because we're we want it to be directly in the middle on the x axis because right now, I mean, it looks like it's in the middle, but it's the beginning that's in the middle. So let's say negative 50 percent on X and then we want to move it up negative 100 percent. Now this right here is the hour needle, right? These down here, this is still the other two because we have three. We have the hour, minute and second. Um, so all we moved right now is the hour. Now we also want to add a rotate because that's how we're going to have this thing move. So let's set it's going to be set to zero degrees initially, which if I save, it's the same thing. If I set it to, let's say, 30 degrees, you'll see that it rotates like a clock. So, I mean, we'll get into that later, but that's how we're going to make this thing move is with transform rotate. Now for the minute, let's see, I'm just going to copy this because we want it in the same position, let's say dot minute. And this is going to be the same. It's going to start at zero degrees, but I want the height instead of 65 pixels. I want it to be 100 pixels. So if I save that now, you can see that we have the minute placed here as well, but it's longer. In fact, if I rotate this 30 and save, you'll see that now the longer hand is rotated 30 degrees, but we want it to start at zero. Now for the second, let's Just take this and let's change this to our second hand or second needle. And then this can stay the same. Let's the height can stay the same as well. What I want to change is the background color. And I want it to be a reddish color. So it's going to be hexadecimal E seven four C three C. So it's like a reddish RNG kind of color and you see if I rotate that. So that's going to be our second hand. Now the center point, which is right here. Remember, we have a div for that div with the class of center point. We're going to want to style that to be a, a, like a, a circle with a border. So I think that we can stop here and we'll continue on with this in the next video because there's still quite a bit of CSS left and I don't want the video to, to take up too much time. All right, so I'll see you in the next one and we'll finish this up. All right, so in the last video, we created our HTML, which is pretty simple and a lot of the styling. So we set the positions of the needles and so on. Um, and in this square right here, we can actually get rid of that now. I just wanted you to see kind of the outline of the clock. So this background color on the clock class, we can get rid of that. And then let's start on the center point. So we have a class of center point and we're going to use the, the center point class, but we're also going to use the after pseudo selector because we want it to be basically two circles. So we need to style both. So it's going to be a circle within a circle. So for this, let's set the background color and we're going to set that to, let's say, E7. Uh, E74C3C. So it's the same color as the second needle. We could put that in a variable, but these are the only two places we're using it and they're right next to each other. So this should be fine. And then I'm going to set the width to 10 pixels and also the height to 10 pixels. So you can see it's just a square. And it's positioned static right now, which is the default positioning. So we want to position it absolute. And as far as where we want to put it, we want it top 50 percent. This is in, within the clock class where that that gray square was. 
and let's say from the left, 50%. Now, that's not directly in the middle, so we need to use transform. Uh, and we want to translate on both axes. So let's say translate and then just negative 50. So we want to pull it back negative 50 on X and Y. So that'll put it directly in the middle. And we want this to be a circle. So let's set the border radius. We're going to set that to 50%, which will make it a circle. Okay. And then I think, yeah, I think that's all we want to do here. Now we also want to add a, uh, like a black dot in the middle. So I'm going to copy. Let's actually just copy this whole thing and say center point. And then we're going to use colon colon after. And since we're using after, we need to add a content property here, which will just be an empty string. And I'm going to set the background color to the primary color, whatever that is. So let's say var dash dash primary color and the width and the height, we want this to be smaller because this is going to be in the middle of the other in the middle of the red circle. So we'll set that to five pixels position. Absolute. This this is all good. That's all the same. So if I save that now we have a little black dot in the middle of our center point. OK, now let's style like the text. So we have the class of time. I'm going to set the font size here to 60 pixels. So nice and big. And then the class of date. So date, I'm going to make the color AAA and then let's set the font size to 14 pixels. Let's set the letter spacing. I'm going to do 0 0.3 pixels and let's make it uppercase. So uh, text transform, we'll set that to uppercase. Now the 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 date like the two here has a span around it with the class of circle. So let's say for date circle, let's make the background color the primary color. And let's make the color the secondary color. And we want it to be a circle, so border radius is going to be 50 percent about that. All right. And then let's add a height and a width. So we'll do 18 pixels. And let's set um, I'm actually going to display this as inline flex. Okay, and then we want the obviously we want the number in the middle. So let's do align items center and let's do justify content center. So that'll put in the middle and then I'm just going to change the line height to the same as the font size, 18 pixels. Um, and then that. When it changes, I want to have a transition, so we'll add a uh, transition. Let's say 0.5 seconds ease in. OK, so I think that that looks pretty good. Actually, the font size, let's say font size 12 pixels. All right, so now we have basically our UI done here. And in the next video, we want to make this function. OK, we want to make the clock work. We want to show the date and time. We want to be able to change to light mode or change to dark mode and back. So we'll get into all of that in the next video. All right. So now comes the fun part. And well, I guess it depends on who you are. Some people do like the UI, the CSS stuff, but I like to make things actually function. So we're going to jump into the JavaScript and let's bring in everything we need. So we'll say the our element document dot and I'm going to use query selector and we want to grab the class of our. So it's going to be the needle with the class of our. And let's just copy this down a bunch of times. So we want the hour. We want the minute and the second. And let's change these variable names. So this will be. A minute. Element and second element. 
And then this is going to be for the time. So that has a class of time. And we want the date. So date. And we also want the toggle switch or toggle button. So this over here will be the date element. And then this will be the toggle. All right. So that's all the stuff we need to bring in. So we want to create a couple of arrays, one for days and one for months. And uh, and you'll see why in a little bit. But I'm just going to paste these in because there's no reason for you to watch me type this out. It's just two arrays, one called days, Sunday through Saturday, one called months, January through December. So very simple. And before we do anything with the date, the time or the clock, I want to handle the dark mode, which is going to be pretty simple. Basically, we just need to change the or add add or remove the class of dark to to the HTML element. And we also want to change the text of this right now. We're in regular or light mode. So it says dark mode. If you change to dark mode, it should then say light mode. So this isn't going to be too hard at all. We just want to take our toggle button. If you guys want to pause the video and figure this out, um, you know, I'm sure that uh, a lot of you can do can do this without watching. So I'm going to continue here and just add an event listener. So we want to even listen for a click and let's pass in a function here with our event object and create a variable here called HTML. And then we're just going to use document dot query selector and we're going to select the HTML element. So basically the root element and we're going to check to see if it has the class of dark. So let's say if HTML dot class list dot and then there's a contains method. If it contains dark, then let's take HTML and let's take our class list object and call the remove method here. We want to remove dark and let's also set E dot target, which means the element we click on, which is the toggle button. We're going to set Uh, the inner HTML. Oops, what am I doing here? Inner HTML. We're going to set that to dark mode because we're in light mode, right? If it contains dark and then we remove it, it means we're in light mode. So we want the button to say dark mode. Else, then let's just copy this. And instead of remove, we want to add the class of dark and we want to change the text here to light mode. All right, so let's go over here and let's click it and you can see it fades into dark mode. The button is now light and the text in all that is all the correct color because of, you know, the primary and secondary colors which we defined up here. Basically on the root scope, it's it's the light mode colors, but if the if HTML has a class of dark, then it's going to be reversed. Okay? So and we have that transition because we did add a CSS transition. So that's that's the easy part. Now we want to do the uh, the clock. So we're going to have let's go under the event listener here and let's create a function called set time. So first thing I'm going to do is set a variable of time and set it to new date and Just to show you what that gives us, we'll console a lot of time here. I'm going to open up my console. Actually, we have to call this set time and it gives me this. All right. Now, with this time variable, I can get specific things like the month, the day, the hours, all that stuff. So I'm going to put those into separate variables. So for the month, we can set we can get it from time dot and then there's a get month method that we can call to get that. Let's do the day so we can do time dot get day. And if you want to console log these to see exactly what it gives you, you can do that. Let's get the hours. So time dot get hours. And then we want the hours for the clock because remember the clock is is 12 is it's 12 hours, right? It's not a 24 hour clock. I mean, you could do that if you want, but I'm going to make it a 12 hour clock. So let's say hours for clock. We're going to set that to whatever the hours is with a, a modulus. We're going to use the modulus operator from 12. So whatever the remainder is, basically. 
Um, and then for the minutes, let's say const minutes, we can use time dot get minutes. Make sure you put parentheses on these gets and then seconds. So const seconds equals time dot get seconds. All right, so that will give us a whole bunch of stuff. Now, as far as making the clock work, let's just close that up because that ruins the UI here. And, and of course, you could put the button somewhere else if you want. But basically, we want to take each of the needles. So like the hour element and we want to set the on the style. We want to set the transform. Okay, and set it to some back ticks. Now in our CSS, you can see for like the hour we have transform translate negative 50 negative 100 and then the rotate is what we really want to focus on here. Um, the rotate is going to depend on the time. So let's just copy this and we'll just uh, just put that right in there like that so that if I save, it's not going to look any different. If I change this to, you know, 30 degrees. Actually, why isn't that working? Transform. Oh, I copied this too. There we go. So you can see that now the hour hand is rotated 30 degrees. So this obviously needs to be dynamic and it needs to pertain to whatever the time is. Now, the way we're going to do this is by using a very helpful utility function that I've actually used in quite a few projects in this course, and that's the scale function. So I'm going to paste this in. I'm using an arrow function and it needs to be above set time where we actually use it. And this is the link to the Stack Overflow page. And this comes in handy because what we need to do is, is map, as it says right here, map a range of numbers to another range of numbers. So we want to map the hours, which is, you know, 12. So it's essentially 0 to 11. We want to map that to 0 to 360 because there's 360 degrees in our clock, in our circle. So for rotate, let's go ahead and pass in our variable syntax. And we're going to set, we're going to call scale. And the number, so the first argument we want to pass in is going to be hours for clock. Okay. So the hours for clock right now for me, it's 1.38 p.m. So this should be one. And then the in min, so the minimum in is going to be zero, the maximum 11. So it's zero to 11, which, which is a 12 hour format. And then we want to map that to zero to 360. Okay, because it's 360 degrees. And then we want to just add the DEG here, just like we have Here it has to have that DEG. So if I save that, now you can see that the hour hand is placed in a specific position. And if we look at, let's see, let's look at the div here for hour, and it has a rotate value of 32.7273 degrees. So it basically took the time, the hours for clock, and mapped that to a position in the 360 degree clock. Okay, and we want to do the same thing for minutes and seconds. So let's grab that and paste that in and let's do the minutes. So we'll take the minute element and in the rotate here, we're going to use scale, but we don't want to use hours for clock because now we're dealing with minutes. So we want minutes, which we got from here. And then instead of 0 to 11, we want 0 to 59. Okay. So 60 minutes in an hour. Um, and then we want to map that to 0 to 360. So if I save that, now the minute hand is over here. And then the same thing for seconds. So second element, we want to scale seconds. And that's also 0 to 59 to 360 degrees. Now, right now, it's just a clock that's kind of frozen in time. We want it to, to operate. We want it to tick. So the set time, we need to keep calling this. So we'll use set interval, which takes in a function, which in our case is set time. And we want to call that every second. So every 1000 milliseconds and I'll save. And now you can see that the second hand is going to tick every second. And this, these should move along as well. 
All right, so we have that working. Um, let's just, did I add a transition to the needle? Yeah, let's do a transition here. So set transition to, which is a transition all to 0.5 seconds and ease in just so it kind of when these move, I mean, you're going to barely see them move just like on a regular clock. But when they do, we want to transition. Now we want to handle this part here, which is the time and the date. So let's go into set time below, you know, where we set all the, the hands or needles, whatever you want to call them. And every time it reaches the end, you know, it's going to do that spin, but it should be accurate. So what do we want to do here? Let's take our time element. All right. So our time element, we want to set the inner HTML. So there's two ways we can do this. We can use hours, which will give us, you know, military time. It'll be it'll, when it's one o'clock, it'll say 13 and then 14, 15 and so on. Or we can do the 12 hour clock. I'm going to go with the 12 hour clock. So I'm going to set it to back ticks here. And we want to use if you want to do the, the 24 hour clock, you can use hours. I'm going to use hours four clock. All right. And then we'll have a colon and then we want the minutes. Now we do want to have um, a zero in front of the minute, right? So if it's if it's 1205, right, we don't want it to just say 12 colon five, which is what minutes gives us. So we want to check to see if it's less than 10. If it is, then we'll add a zero. So here, let's open up another, you know, variable syntax. And let's say if minutes, I'm going to use a ternary here. So if minutes is less than 10, then let's add a zero. So we'll put in a set of back ticks and say zero. And then whatever the um, whatever the minutes is. And then we'll go outside of the back ticks here and say else, then just put in whatever the minutes is. So let's save that. And you can see I get 143. Now, at the moment, there's no way to tell if this is AM or PM. I mean, you're probably going to know, but we should put that somewhere. So what we'll do is add. Let's add a variable up here, we'll call it AM PM. And the way that we can get this is by checking the hours. So I'll use a ternary here. I'll say if hours is greater than or equal to 12, then let's set PM else. Let's set this string to AM. OK, and then we'll go down here and right after minutes, let's put in AM PM. So now I get 144 PM. So for the date, let's do that. Let's go right here and say date element. And I'm going to set that equal to some back ticks. And in here, this is where we're going to use our days and month array. So I'll say day or days. And I want to use the day that I got from here as an index for the days. OK because it's going to be, you know, zero, one, two, three and so on. Um, so that'll give us the day. And then for the month, let's put a comma here and oops, not there here because we want like this Monday and then comma and then November or whatever the whatever the month is. So let's take the months array and for the index, we're going to use the month that we got from up here. All right. And then let's see. So we have that. Then we have a span. So let's put a span in here. Give it a class let's use circle span. And then in here is where we want the day. So we can actually just put in here the date variable, which Wait a minute. Do we not put this? We didn't do this. All right. So let's copy this down under day. And let's say date 
and set that to get date. All right. So I saved that and now I should be able to get rid of everything that we have inside this div with the class of date. And if I save, we should get rid of this too. And let's see, that's not showing up. Oh, I, I need to set inner HTML. And there we go. So I get the same thing, Monday, November 2nd. Okay, so now this works. This is dynamic. We can change to dark mode or light mode. And hopefully this just gives you a better understanding of how to deal with like CSS and changing specific um, styles and stuff like that. All right, so that's going to be it for this project, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one.